Hi everyone, Shini here and welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be the part two in our automation lead interview question series. And if you're new to this channel, I would strongly recommend go ahead and subscribe to it. Do not miss out on such useful content, which is going to help you to prepare for any kind of a tech technology, programming language and for interviews. So let's get started with today's topic. So this is going to be a part two in today's series that is the automation lead interview questions part two. So I'm going to directly go on to the document which we have prepared and let's continue with the next question. So the next question which we have on automation lead interview questions is about this particular topic. Okay. So I'm going to talk about this in detail. Okay, don't not worry about this. I'm going to talk about this and I'll write it from scratch for you. Even though I have already prepared a solution for it, but I don't want to show it right away. I want to show it how it is to be done. Okay, because this is to be solved during interview. So you have to be knowing how exactly it is to be done. So let me show you the question and I'll write down the answer for the same and explain you all. Okay. So the question is, you have to write a code using Cucumber BDD to perform a login on a website. Okay. And validate the logo displayed on the home page once it is logged in. Okay, so let's take an example of a Gmail website. So if the interviewer is not asking you specifically for any website, you can assume your own website and you can let them know that I am trying to go and log in into this particular website. And then you can uh, structure your solution accordingly. So it's very important that when you are explaining the code or when you are writing the code, you explain it in a structured way. It should look like you are having a clear approach in your mind. It should be systematic. So tell them first of all that we are, since we are to use Cucumber BDD, I would like to enlighten you with the structure or the components of a Cucumber BDD framework. This is how you have to start with. Do not directly start with solution. Tell about the components. Tell we will have step definition component. We will have test runner component. And we will also have the features file, which has different scenarios. That has different scenarios so now remember one important thing that they have asked a positive scenario here that user has to perform a login on a website and validate the logo displayed in the home page logo means basically the gmail logo and let's add one more thing to that gmail logo and user profile icon so once a user is successfully logged in only then we will be able to see a user profile icon as well. So this gives a double assertion for us that our code is going to indeed do the proper assertion. Okay. So there are three components of compatibility framework, step definition, test runner and features file. And we will be having this Kukumar BDD in a Mavenized project. So this is how we have to explain them. It will be a Mavenized project, which will have form.xml. And in this form.xml, we will have all the required dependencies for running uh, libraries with Java, right, with Selenium, JUnit, etc. We will be having all of that. And we will have these components of Cucumber BDD. Okay. Once that is done, then you can start writing the components of individual components. Okay. So first we will say public class test runner. This is the class name which we have, but within this class name, we will be having certain options, right? So first we'll be having a run with annotation, which will be with cucumber.class, okay? Then we will be having another annotation, which is the main one, cucumber options, okay? Now inside this, we will be having blue. Blue is nothing but our step definitions. And you will be requiring features file. So that I'm saying will be present in this particular folder called features. Okay. And then you will be having a format, okay, which will be like we'll be using a format. So we'll be trying to just say that we will be trying to make it. So let's come to format later on. Okay. Because for now, let's keep it simpler because you should not, uh, you know, make it too complicated. Let's keep it simple for now. Let will come to the format part later on. Okay. So we'll be then starting with the code. Okay. So this is all what is required in the test under file. So this is what all you need to write it in a test under file. Keep it simple. Now let's come to features file. Okay. 
so we'll call it as feature what are we going to test gmail login that's all we need to write in feature then say scenario now since we are talking about a positive flow and it's only talking about the login part you don't have to worry much about it you have to just keep uh, writing in a way that it looks like a positive flow so you can say given a user uh, i'll just tell you one solution here then i'll try to revise the solution and answer that given a user loads chrome browser okay this is the first thing which we need to write so so you can write this way scenario should have a scenario name user should be able to log in successfully Gmail account. Okay. Now, user loads Chrome browser, and actually, what happens is that you can also use and. Okay. And if you want to do any additional action with given annotation itself, means in the given condition itself, you can say user enters application. User enters application URL, and then you can enter the application URL. So let's say I want to enter gmail.com, right? So this is the website for gmail.com. Okay. Then what else we need to do after this? We have logged in. We have just entered the loaded the website, right? Now, when comes when action, when user enters, now you're going to give a username and password. So you can say username. This is the value of the username within double quotes. Now, you have not yet completed your action in when, right? Because you still have to do certain actions. So in when you will be also entering password. User enters password. So you can say this way in username field. Similarly, you can say this way. Password field. Okay. Now what else we need to do? We need to also click on the login button and user clicks on the let's say login button this is not a value actually so we can just directly say user clicks on the login button remember only the ones which we are providing values we have to enclose within double quotes it could be a numerical value it could be a string value it could be anything but we need to use this double quotes for parameterizing our values inside our steps inside a scenario that is the important thing and this is the positive flow which we have to only work on as per the user expectation or the interviewer's question right so this is the first part now you can also fine tune it using hooks sorry uh, using background so often you may get multiple scenarios to be written in case of a cucumber bdd scenario so you don't have to write this way you can make it simpler by saying uh, user logs, user loads the Gmail website and does login. That's all, right? Now, what you have to do, you have to simply copy these steps, which are most of the times which are getting repeated, right? So, copy these steps here and use background. Okay. So, I'll create a detailed video on background, but I'm just giving you that how you can explain to the interviewer. Uh, these things in a proper way. Okay, we are solving an interview question. That is the reason I'm using background here. And what you have to do here, you don't have to do much a part here. So let's say after your login is completed, right? So I'll remove all these steps from here because we have covered it in the background. Okay. So our background is having these all things already present. Okay. So this is a separate feature file, and there is a separate background which we have created which is covering all these prerequisite steps to uh, just do a login into the website okay so here we have to enter it within double quotes remember that because it's a value okay now since user has clicked on the login button what should happen now comes the then part then user should be able to see gmail logo gmail homepage okay and this is not done yet user should be 
able to see their profile icon on right side okay so what i've done i have basically taken out the prerequisite steps and put it into a background this will give the interviewer a very good impression about the candidate's knowledge because these are the common repetitive actions which will be happening for every particular test case so you don't have to write it in every test case all these common steps you have to put it into a background and you have to implement the step definition for these also in a step definition file okay and whatever are the only additional steps which you require to complete successfully your scenario validation those only you have to keep it in your scenario so this will give a very good impression to the interviewer now let's come to the step definition file and now i'll talk about one important concept as well that is hooks file this is going to give a complete clarity to the interviewer that this candidate is really out of the box and this candidate knows in and out of a, of cucumber bdd framework so they will definitely have a positive impression that this candidate knows end to end now how do you implement the step definition so you can write public class step definitions and uh, i'm just making sure that this in, this particular entire question is solved so it may take some more time but i'm going to solve it completely and show it to you all and how you need to explain now you'll be writing a public class step definition file now what is a step definition this is like a glue what we say this is called a glue to our feature file means whatever feature file steps we have written here whatever we have written feature file steps here it's going to give a implementation to each and every step okay you need not write each and every step in the interview unless the interviewer ask you but you have to start letting them letting them know that you are writing it completely if in case they ask you to stop you can stop it okay so i'm writing given annotation here now your glue definition would start like this your step definition you have to first write this particular symbol okay that is the starts with symbol and you need to end with a dollar symbol this is how your entire step definition would be enclosed so let's start with the background so this is the first one right so you have to copy from here or you can remove this a not required given user logs loads chrome browser okay we are not going to do a complete implementation in this particular video if you want me to do that i'll create a separate video which will show end to end implementation and real practical i'll demonstrate it in a particular project and show it to you all how it works this is just to solve the interview question and how you can write a kind of a pseudo code to the interviewer this is all what they would expect but still for your understanding if you want me to do a practical implementation i can do that okay now i'm just going to create a structure first for all my step definition and then we will go on to the uh, entire solution how it is looking like okay so i'm going to copy all these things because the format is also important you should not miss out on the syntactical part yes so i'm going to remove all these things okay take out this part and just keep it like this we already okay i think we removed that okay let's keep one of them let's paste it here now this is already there user has entered or loaded the chrome browser now what additional things we need to do remember we are have a we have a and here right means we have to use it in the given annotation only so you have to write like this okay but after this comes the parameter right so this we need to be little careful about so here we need to write like this public void and you will be suggested by the eclipse or any id that you need to write a method like this okay actually this is a very uh, i would say a long method name so if you want you can make it short as well that user i'll show you so this is the way i first i'll show you how the suggestion will be given by compiler so there is no parameter so this is all what it will show you so now you can rephrase it i'll show it in the other method maybe i'll keep it the same way for this one i'll say now public void okay, now you can see here user enters url you can keep your uh, format short and you have to pass a parameter here for this particular annotation the reason is because you have a value here you have to provide a value here and the value have to be written like this so those who are already knowing java syntax they would know that 
double quotes is actually your escape character. So you cannot write double quotes within double quotes. You have to use an escape character that is a backslash. Now, whatever string you have, you have to write like this. This is a syntax to write a string parameter in case of a given or any annotation. Okay. So once you have given the method name like this here, then you can write your syntax. It means whatever code you have, you can write it here. Okay. This is the implementation part which I have mentioned. I'll be covering it in a subsequent video. I'll do it end to end. Okay. Now we are just implementing the pseudo structure of all our step definition. Okay. Now, similarly, let's copy the syntax for our other two methods which are there. Okay. So we have given the user interest application URL. Now this part is taken care. Now we need to enter these three things, right? So let's copy one more because we have one more for clicking on the login button. Fine. Now let's complete it. So public user enters, clicks on the login button. So copy this entire part. This is all on the when. See, after when the and is continued. So this is coming under the when. So here you need to write at the rate when. Again, start with your okay, user clicks on the login button. There is no parameter. Fine. So we have to click on, you have to write dollar and then complete it. This is what we need to write, but we need to change this, this thing. So we'll say user clicks login. So keep it meaningful name for every method and have this kind of a naming convention. The first word should be small, starting with small character and all the subsequent words should be starting with a capital character like C L B. Okay. And there is no parameter. So let's remove the parameter and your code will come here. Okay. Let's similarly do for the above ones as well. So this is done. And now let's say user enters username in the username field and password field. Okay. Let's do it here. Okay. User enters username in username field. Let's copy this part. So first of all, I'm going to cut this part because user enters username. Okay. In username field. Okay. So we have completed the definition for this one. Ensure there is no extra space. See, there should be only one space. And this is a username. So this is a username. So I will say user enters username. Okay. Now copy this part as well. We will be doing it for the password, right? I'll move this. This is extra. And here we go in password field and this will be your password okay user enters password so we have successfully done the implementation of the major steps of our scenario only two things which are remaining here are the validation part this part and this actually we have to do assertions and show it to the interviewer as well so don't worry i'll show that particular code as well so, and I'll also show what is hooks file. So we'll come to that in a moment, but first let's complete our ask question. So let's copy the annotations for our two assertions, which are remaining. Let's put it in the next page. Okay. Now let's see what is required. We have to do user should be able to see the Gmail logo. Fine. Let's complete this part for that. We need to change it from when to then annotation. Copy the entire thing as it is without leaving any space. Okay. This is how it should be done. Then you have to say user sees Gmail logo. Okay. This looks good. And then you have to make it for the remaining method that user should be able to see the Gmail. Okay. This is done. User should be able to see their profile icon on the right hand side. Yes, let's complete this part. And that is it. And here you need to change the method name. User sees. Okay, so this completes our code for our this ask question, but it's not done yet. We have just done the structure part. Now comes the assertion. Okay. Now, when you're trying to do any assertion or when you're trying to do any validation in Selenium, there is a method called assert. There is a class called assert in which we have a method called assert true or assert equals, etc. So here, what we are saying, we need to see Gmail logo. Okay. So what we have to say is that we have to put a condition here because we are writing true, right? 
so i have to write a pseudo code driver dot find element by dot let's say for now i'm using id so i'm just saying gmail logo let's say there is a id called gmail logo for the locator of gmail logo so this particular one okay see i've closed the two parentheses then i'll say is displayed yeah i think is displayed should be good this is a method by the way and this is going to return your boolean value so when this returns a boolean value if it is really displayed only then it will return you true so if it returns you true so you are expecting true you got true here and that is why your test case will pass so you need to write like this way and show it to the interviewer and whatever code you are writing okay uh, important thing is you have to do assertion and also you have to do exception handling you have to use your java conceptual thing also when you are writing code in cucumber bdd so either you can handle the exceptions in your test cases i mean your assertions in your test cases so if you don't want to handle any exception here you can just say throws exception if you don't want to handle at this particular level you can just say throws exception and whatever exception this may be throwing in case if it throws at run time you need to handle it using try catch block whichever method is calling it okay but let's say there is no method or no class which is calling this method then the preferred way is that you need to write using try catch block so that also i'm showing here so that this becomes like a complete understanding for anyone who wants to explain this in a interview and then you need to use also finally block and this will give us complete impression to the interviewer that this no this person knows java this person knows everything and you can take your time in case the interview says no need to do that then you can skip it okay now let's come to the user profile icon part again you can use assert assert dot assert true and here you need to talk about the icon so driver dot find element by dot let's use xpath this time and let's say i'm saying uh, some tag name so i don't want to use a tag okay let's use maybe this is a profile icon right so maybe i'll just say div tag for now at the rate id equal to icon okay i have to use both the types of locator okay and that is it we have completed this two parentheses and one more parenthesis outside and this is completing that yeah we have to have one method right by dot so before we close the other one we need to say this particular element is displayed right and that that's complete so now our entire code is completed now let's come to the another important part yeah so if you want to also implement the implementation part okay i'll show you how do we do that so here we will create a web driver driver and i have will uh, initialize it here i will say driver so before we are using chrome driver right so we need to set a property system dot set property and uh, web driver which property we need to set web driver dot chrome dot driver we need to set the path for a driver now so how we need to write is also a very simpler important way that we need to say system dot get property use a user directory variable and then you can append the path where your driver is stored let's say it is stored within resources folder so go to resources folder and chrome driver dot exe so i'll explain you what i have done here so i have taken the current directory path that is the current project path whichever project i am currently in and inside that particular project i am having a resources folder where i will be storing inside it the chrome driver dot exe file so that way i don't have to keep searching within my local space as to where is my driver file so once this property is done okay what you have to do is you have to use driver equal to new chrome driver this is just a pseudo code guys so uh, this is what they will expect only in, in the interview if you write this much it's more than enough okay i'm just doing one step further and showing the complete code what you need to do you need to launch the chrome browser that's all this thing is talking about right you don't have to do anything so that's all then keep it as it is still chrome driver now you have to enter the application url so let's complete the code driver dot get which url application url fine let's load it 
always a good practice to also get the title printed. So SYSO driver dot get title and show it to the interviewer that you know something additional things also that even though he has not asked it, we are just ensuring that we are on the right page and this things all we have implemented, right? So user enters username field, right? So again, driver dot find element, okay? By dot, let's go for class and let's say username, okay? Then we have to enter now. So we have to say send keys for entering and what send keys username. Copy this part because this is going to be common also inside the other method, which you have to enter the password. Here we are going to use a password. And that is it. Now we need to click on login button. Again, let's complete the code for this part. Driver dot find element. I dot again, let's go for XPath. Or let's say CSS selector. Yeah, we are using different things here. So anything you can use. And let's say I want to go for CSS selector, which is having the ID. ID we represent in CSS selector by hash, right? So I'm having the login. It's like a button. So I'm saying button is a tag name. And the value for that is login. ID, ID for that is login. That is why I'm writing using CSS selector. Yeah, sorry. So we need to write this way. The ID name, the tag name, sorry, and then the hash symbol is representing the notation that it is the next value. What we are going to have here is the ID, and that is it. So this is completed. Yeah, this is going to be small. We have to uh, we have to do this entire thing in a note, notepad or Word document, anything whichever you are comfortable. They may not preferably ask you to do it in an ID, and after that, what you need to do, you need to click on it. That's all. Okay. So this completes the implementation part. They have also done the then part. So this is the thing which they are expecting you to write in an interview. This is what they are expecting you to do. And you can say here, exception part. This completes the entire code and e dot get message. See, for writing so many times, you sometimes have the syntax all by hearted. So you don't have to worry about it. Right now, they may ask you what you do in a finality clause. So you can say, Close connections, DB connections, close DB connections if any, close file objects, right? Close driver sessions so that there is no memory leakage. So give them a complete answer and also tell them that we can actually do a lot of things with hooks file. That we have before annotation, we have after annotation, okay? So these all things we need to tell them that what will happen before each particular step definition method is called, what will happen after each after method is called. So you can have some uh, actions done. Okay. So before method. like that, you can show, and this is more than enough for the, this particular interview question. And this will complete your answer. And let's say after method. And whatever code is required to be done before we execute each scenario in a test case, we'll do here. Whatever things is to be done after we execute each things in a scenario, we'll be doing here. So now comes the important part that in the before method, right? You can actually try to use, okay, or call the background steps because these background steps are what is you're trying to do before you start with any test case, right? But we have already taken care using background, so we don't have to worry. Let's say if there is anything prerequisite to that. Let's say we need to, uh, I'll tell you. Let's say we need to uh, load some properties file, for example, right? Or some other config file, some other load, other configurations, etc., are required to be loaded. Then those are things we can do within the before method. And in the after method, you can close connections. You can terminate browser, browser sessions browser. So these all things you can do in the after method. So this is the hooks file, which is going to happen for every scenario. It will be done here. So before method will do the prerequisites and after method will do the uh, tear down or we can say like the cleanup actions. Okay. So this is a complete solution for our interview question that perform a login using Cucumber BDD.
okay and once it is logged in validate the gmail logo and also the profile icon i'll create a separate video on the implementation part for cucumber end to end which will cover all these concepts whichever i explained to you and in addition i'll also cover tags in cucumber so stay tuned for that video and thank you for watching my channel please do subscribe to it and hit the bell icon to get notifications thank you guys